a beautiful evening, sun setting, and it's just good to be back in this beautiful terrain. I love being out here. Uh, in the coming weeks and videos, I'm going to take you through a variety of different habitats. We're going to go through these rolling sagebrush hills. I'll take you out to some open grasslands, and then we're going to hike up some mountains, all in search of four different species of grouse that I'm hoping to spend some time with and photograph. Not only am I going to hopefully get out to photograph them, but we're going to discuss a few things uh, that I consider each time I go out to spend time with these birds. We're going to talk about taking pictures using a photo blind. We're going to talk about lek etiquette. We're going to talk about getting a decent picture while doing so in a very ethical manner. And we're going to talk about how I find these animals to photograph. Not just the grouse, but any animal. How do I find the locations that I take pictures in? So follow along this week, part one of four, as I spend some time with the greater sage grouse and also spend some time talking about taking pictures using a photo blind. Uh, speaking of blinds, sun's going down, it's getting late, it's getting cold. I need to get it set up, so let's go. Alright, um, I've got my blind all set up now. Yeah, I'm using this pop-up blind. I've shown another blind on a few of my other videos. It's one that I made that I am able to lay down on the ground and get a lot closer to the ground and uh, the grouse's eye level. The reason I'm not using that blind at this lek location is there's a lot of cactuses on the ground here and trust me it's not fun lying down on the ground here. Uh, the other reason is there's a lot of taller brush out here and being so low to the ground in that other blind that brush can get in the way of a lot of images so where this pop-up blind has these taller windows i'm able to get up over the brush for the most part so it tends to be a, a good blind for this lek here i've used that word a number of times now a lek and in case you're wondering what that is it's this open area in the sagebrush where these greater sage grouse come to display. The males will congregate and they'll display for the females, hoping to attract a female to mate with. Uh, so you can see there's all this taller sagebrush and then there's the clearing here. And the way that I knew to set up my blind here and not, you know, 100 yards over that way or 20 yards over that way is I've been to this lek multiple, or multiple times now. I've been here years in a row, but the very first year that I found it, for days before I ever set up a blind, I watched it from quite a distance off. And the reason I did that is I wanted to see where the males were displaying, so I knew not to set up my blind at that spot. Uh, you never just want to go into a lek when you find one and set up your blind where you think it's going to be best for a picture. You need to watch that lek and uh, the males displaying for quite a time before you ever set up your blind because if you just go in the middle of the lek and set up a blind you're going to disrupt things, you're going to throw things off and those males they're pretty uh, they, they tend to stay to a very specific area and if you throw that off you're just going to mess things up. The females as well, they're a lot more skittish than the males are. So, uh, you know, these blinds, you're not invisible in them. If the females see you moving, moving around or something in there, they're gone. And, you know, you're, you're disrupting the, the breeding cycle at that point. So please, if you ever go out to photograph, you know, sage grouse or any type of grouse or any animal for that matter, uh, like I've said before, just do your homework and make sure you know that where you're setting up is going to be best for the animal and not just your picture. But uh, I'm going to go now. It's getting cold and I still need to set up my base camp. So I'm going to go set that up, get some dinner, and uh, we'll call it an evening because i got to be here early in the morning. Okay, let's go. You know, these grouse, they have a really hard time of things out here. It's a hard life that they live, uh, this environment that they live in. It can be incredibly harsh. The weather can be extreme. It can be very arid out here. They've got a lot of natural predators to deal with. It's just, it's not an easy life for them. Uh, their biggest competitor though 
is uh, it's humans it's us we've you know introduced a lot of Maybe there's a meadow lark out there pretty birds um, we've introduced a lot of unnatural things to them you know they they have a lot of cows livestock to deal with and uh, the cows they just they go through they'll trample a lot of the nests they rip up the vegetation um, they take over these lek areas and make them their grazing areas uh, it, it's just hard for them there's the oil drilling you know different stuff like that there's so much that these grouse have to deal with and I've noticed each year uh, that there's less and less out here and this morning it's just quiet there's nothing out there it breaks my heart to see this uh, I've never seen this before at this location there's just nothing though it's just quiet I'm gonna head out here uh, call it a morning there's nothing out here it's just it's quiet um, my plan, I'm going to pack up, go get some breakfast, go cook something. It's, it's cold, so I'm going to get hot breakfast. And uh, then I'm going to head out. There's another lek. Uh, it's a few hours away, three, two and a half, three hours away. Uh, so I'm going to start heading out, heading towards that. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to see something there tomorrow. It's too late in the day today to get anything there and uh, even if I did get there and there were birds I, I can't set up with them there um, you know I just scare them away but uh, yeah I'll set up out there and uh, hopefully tomorrow morning be able to get something because there's just nothing nothing here like I said before I've seen fewer and fewer birds here each year but uh, this is the first time that I've I've just never seen anything uh, if I don't get anything out at that other location, I'll uh, come back here and check it again. Uh, try to watch it from a, a distance next time, just to make sure it wasn't me that, you know, spooked the birds out or something, or made it so they didn't come in in the morning. But uh, I've set up here for years now, and I've I've never had birds not come in. So uh, it's just it's. It's hard to see, it's sad to see that. Um, yeah, it just, it hurts. Um, I feel for those birds, but uh, yeah, let's go. Um, I don't want it to get too too late in the day. It starts getting that sun out here. Uh, it gets pretty harsh, so I'm gonna pack up and let's go. Alright, um, got to my second location, got the blind all set up. It's getting pretty windy, but I've got it staked down and I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I've still got a few hours of daylight left, so I'm going to go out exploring a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of life out here if you, if you can find it, that's just the hard part. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go out exploring, see if I can get a few pictures, who knows. And uh, I'll be back in this blind first thing in the morning.
what an amazing morning I have just had. I had so much fun in here. Uh, I've been in this blind for about five hours now and uh, the grouse just moved off 15-20 minutes ago into the sage and so I'm going to head out as well. Uh, I always like waiting a little bit after they move off just you know they usually move off just to the edge of the sagebrush. I want to give them time to get into that sage uh, so they don't see me getting out and taking down the blind. So um, once they've moved off, I don't just get up and leave. I always wait a little bit first uh, to to uh, leave. But yeah, they've moved off now. And uh, yeah, I've been in this blind for about five hours now. And uh, I'm tired. Uh, you have to get in the blind early, early uh, before the birds are in the area or else you're going to alert them that you're here. And uh, so you might you might ask, you know, why not just sleep in the blind? Why not set it up at night and just sleep in it so you're in here already in the morning? Uh, there's a few reasons I don't do that. So reason number one being I don't want this blind to smell like me. I want to minimize the amount of time that I spend in these blinds uh, just because I don't want them smelling like me. You know, that's that's not something that you have to worry about with the grouse uh, or most birds. But if I use this blind later this year for a fox den or trying to get some bears, you know, something like that, uh, trying to use it with an animal that relies heavily on their sense of uh, smell, I'm going to alert them, you know, as soon as I set the blind up, even if I'm not there, if this blind smells like me, uh, they're going to be alerted that... Uh, this blind is something human related and they're going to be much more wary of it. So I try to minimize the amount of time that I spend in here. I never cook in here. I don't want it smelling like food either. You know, I just, I don't want it smelling like anything really. So that's one reason. Uh, another reason being, uh, you make more noise at night than you think you do. So, you know, if you set up and you're sleeping in here and you roll over in the middle of the night, you're making a lot of rustling noise. Or if your feet bump the, the side of the blind and shake it and there's something passing through the area or if the grouse are passing through the area in this scenario uh, at night, you're going to alert them that something is here by this blind or in the blind and uh, they're going to be a lot more wary of it again. So. Uh, those are a few of the reasons that I I don't sleep in here. I set my base camp up somewhere else, away from the blind, and uh, I always, you know, I'll just get up early in the morning, come in before the animals are in the area, and just wait it out. And uh, yeah, it, it it works great. I love shooting from from blinds. There's pros and cons, um, but. O overall, it's usually a really good experience uh, anytime I spend time in the blind. Uh, you can go hours or even days without seeing a thing sometimes, but uh, for the most part, I, you know, I have a lot of success in these blinds, so I really enjoy it. But I'm going to take it down now, head back to my base camp, get some breakfast because I am hungry, and uh, then I'm going to do some more exploring today. It was very weird today. Uh, usually I come out here to get as many pictures as I can and I'll be honest I didn't take a single picture this morning um, it, it feels weird what I did instead was focus on getting video footage I have hardly any video footage of these grouse the last video footage I, I've got of them was two years ago and that's when I was just dabbling and it's just the worst footage ever so I really wanted to focus on getting some video footage. I've got a lot of pictures of these guys, I'll put some up here in this video, uh, some of my favorites, but uh, I have yeah, next to no, no video footage. So I got some really fun stuff this morning, I'm really excited about it and uh, still feels weird that I didn't take any pictures but that's okay because I've got pictures already and I wanted video. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it though, take this down, head out, uh, get some breakfast and do some exploring and I'll check in with you later. Time to shed some layers, it is getting hot.
about apple and peach. Sounds good to me. Little glob of peanut butter in there. Man, it's good stuff. Running low on water, I'm gonna have to filter some later today. I'm gonna be out here for the next few days still exploring. Um, I've been out here for, oh, what has it been? Three days now and I'll be out for another another couple days. But uh, yeah, this area, it's just so fun to spend time in. Um, there's a lot of life out here if you if you spend the time looking for it. Um, my time with these sage grouse though, uh, like I mentioned before, I think I'm done at this lack. I'm going to go explore some other areas and uh, see what I can find. And uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I had a fun time making it. Uh, you know, it was sad for me to see that other lack. Um, how there's no grouse there. I, I'm thinking I'll probably make my way back there and uh, check it out another morning. I'm gonna keep my distance though. I, I wanna know if it was just a fluke that there were no grouse there yesterday or uh, if that lek really is just dead. Um, so I'll probably make my way back there, check it out again. Um, and like I say, I'll, I'll be out here for another couple days just exploring around, seeing what I can find. Uh, not just looking for grouse, but for some other animals too that I'm, I've got in mind. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this week's video, uh, spending time with these greater sage grouse. Beautiful birds, I love spending time with them. And uh, just this habitat that they live in, it, it's wonderful. And I hope you've enjoyed me talking a little bit, a little bit about uh, photographing from a photo blind. Uh, it's something that a lot of people haven't ever done before, and I recommend giving it a try. Uh, it does take a lot of patience, honestly. Uh, there's there's days where you won't get anything, and uh, there's days where what you were hoping to shoot, you know, 20 yards in front of you is 200 yards away, and it's hard to get anything. You can't move the blind at that point. So there's pros and cons, but uh, overall, I really like using a, a photo blinds to get pictures. So I hope you've enjoyed and uh, I'll be coming right back at you again next week with a uh, another part to this little series that I'm working on. I'll be with another species of grouse. I'll be heading out to some open uh, grasslands and uh, looking for another species of grouse and we'll be talking about uh, something I call lek etiquette and uh, it goes hand in hand with what we've been uh, talking about this time, but uh, there's some other things that I wanted to discuss there as well. So uh, thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. And uh, I need to dig my hat out because this sun, it's, it's catching my uh, solar panel forehead here. So uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for following along. And uh, yeah, until then, we'll see ya.